Hey guys, DMike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Now you might be asking yourself, what in the heck and heck are we doing back in Orberg Town? City, village, township, whatever it is. Well, if you remember, there was a peculiar guy down in the mines or somewhere, remember we met him, I don't know, forget it, who was very interested in fossils. And I'm very interested in fossils. I think archaeology and paleontology is pretty darn interesting. And it just so happens that we have a fossil. Went down to the underground, found myself one. And we do have a submission. In this case, it's the skull fossil. And this guy is an incredible scientist. All you have to do is go outside. Walk back inside. Give him a little yoo-hoo. And there it is. So, just like good old Roark himself, we have ourselves a Cranidos. This is the Headbutt Pokemon. This is the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond exclusive fossil Pokemon. It lives in jungle. It lived in jungles around 100 million years ago. Its skull is as hard as iron. I know some people like that. Okay. And we have a male Cranidos. And, hmm, what's a good name for a Cranidos? I'm gonna go Craig. Craig the Cranidos. I like the, the alliteration. That's a nice name, right? Craig? Everybody knows a Craig. I feel like Craig's kind of a name that's been phased out of modern nomenclature, though. How often do you meet a Craig? You don't. Okay. So that's all we've got for now in this area. I'm going to go ahead and flash forward. All right, guys, I'm back here right outside Eternal Forest. I'm going to go ahead and get our first glimpse into the wonderful world of Cut. Once again, don't need to use an HM slave in this game, which is very nice. We can slather this bark with honey. We'll do that, of course. Probably gonna forget. But this is on the way back to... Um, Eterna City. So, I figured... Might as well... Briefly explore this area. There's some items down here, I believe. Why not? Pile of silver powder. I wonder if that could take the edge off after a hard day's work. Just kidding. And sleep talk. Great. Another TM that we probably won't use. Let's go ahead and peep it. You're peeping me. All right, let's peep it. Sleep talk. Is... A random used move when the Pokemon is asleep. What a waste of a move slot. Anyway. Coming up here. This is just kind of a little aside. You don't have to do this. Two raspberries. I actually do really like raspberries, the actual fruit. Well, I don't know if I would say, well, I like raspberry flavored things. I don't know if I would actually go out of my way to eat a raspberry. They're kind of fuzzy, which is weird. Make my mouth feel silly. And once again, all these plots, you still cannot have your character face sideways and see them use the spray duck. It's unfortunate. All right, so that's a good little haul of berries right there. If you're so inclined. All right, let's go ahead and mosey on back. This is just literally right outside Eternal City, right by the forest. So it's a nice little detour if you're interested. Right back in there. And now with Craig in tow, we can progress the story. This very menacing looking building that has spikes coming out of it. What better way to show that you're evil than to have spikes come out of your building, right? And before we go in there, all these little inclusions of cut. You come back here behind this white picket fence. A little classist, okay. We will find ourselves with the TM for Thief. So, there you go. Not a horrible move, but it is what it is. Now, with Craig, level one. 
So anytime that you get a fossil and you have a Pokemon that is recovered, revived from that, any of the ones that you can get besides the... Um, you'll be able to get every fossil that, for the most part, I think there's like eight or nine that you can get, and there's obviously going to be one that's exclusive to your game. So, Cranidos is the exclusive for Diamond. The Pearl exclusive is Shielden, for those so inclined. So here we are in the Galactic Hideout. And as I've seen now, it appears that there are female and male grunts. It looks like the male grunts have the bob haircut and the females have like that shoulder length haircut. Interesting. I mean, I'm also interested in the uh, the world beyond the stars. I like that too. So as was brought up, oh, so you guys have been attacking small business people. That's not very kind. So as was brought up in a comment that the Pokemon in this game, the reason why Team Galactic typically uses Pokemon that are inferior or kind of a lower level is because they've been stealing Pokemon. So that's how they acquire them. And if you didn't already notice, the... Okay, so they're not children, they must be adults. Is that... Uh, I put Dimitri in the box for now. Dimitri's a little bit overleveled, and I mean like by a level or two. So it's not egregious, but I figured this could potentially be a good opportunity. Well, Bard is not a good choice. But this could be a good opportunity for raising other members of the team. In this case, I wanted to get Craig in there to get some of that sweet, sweet experience all. Because why not? And in the process of trying to get Craig, Miguel was able to level up and learn Nightshade, which is a move that does the amount of damage equal to your level. So that's pretty interesting. In some of those little kind of underground open areas, they have some pretty nasty Pokemon that as you level up and you gain badges, like this feels like we're very overleveled, but I haven't done, I promise you, I've gotten maybe a level two tops. Oh my goodness. Well, there you go. That's one of the things that's interesting about when you have low level Pokemon like that, any sort of H HP. Nope, there it is. Every type, every time they get experience, it's going to just rocket their level up. And this is kind of the magic of Cranidos. Eight stat points and four levels for attack. That's wild. Cranidos has one of the highest base stat attack, base attack stats, excuse me, in the game. It's pretty incredible. So yeah, I'm assuming that because Eterna Forest is right there and you've got, you know, basically starter Pokemon or starting Pokemon, like base level Pokemon in the forest and in the surrounding areas, that makes sense. That would be the ones that Team Galactic would be stealing from local trainers. But what's also strange is that, you know, none of the trainers they've been stealing Pokemon from have been... Like, none of them had, like, the starters that we got, you know? Like, why are we special? I mean, obviously, you know, having a character that's relative to the professor in the area is nice, but, you know, it is what it is. But I believe that this galactic building would be a good opportunity to kind of train Craig. He's unfortunately a little bit too weak to actually do enough damage that I would be willing to throw it out there, but... You know, Craig is awesome, and Craig will be awesome. A very formidable member of the team. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go and parse through who the members of the team will be going forward, but I'm going to keep swapping them out, whatever is advantageous. And I've thought of something that I think could be an, an interesting dynamic. Yeah, see, already has 24 attack, that's wild. An interesting dynamic going forward that I think would be a cool way to make the game a little bit more challenging for myself is every gym leader has three Pokemon, right? Usually two or three. And you have the option to combat a gym leader with a team of six. Max, obviously. Now, I think it would be fun if going forward, I limit myself to the having the only, only the same amount of Pokemon. I can't not talk. Not having a stroke, don't worry. To only having the same amount of Pokemon as they do. Now, the only downside to that is that I would miss out on the experience all of the gym battles, but in reality, this game is pretty darn easy. So I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything. If I can do something to kind of 
stunt the amount of experience gained. Like, I'm not trying to prevent myself from getting it, but also, like, once again, I'm only going after experience that's gained from trainer battles or gym battles. I'm not going and doing any sort of wild encounters. Occasionally, I will have, you know, something where I get ambushed or, like, I'll have the thing, like, with Cheryl in the Eterna Forest and I can't get away from it. You know, a Pokemon might wind up swapping in and, like, using Explosion or something. And, like, that's not something I can control. But whatever is within my control, I will do my due diligence. I will do-do. And try to not beef up my team. Because this game is so easy. I'm trying to find a way to implement some sort of artificial challenge, I guess. These galactic grunts in and of themselves are very easy, so... And being one-on-one -on -one battles, maybe it wouldn't hurt just to try to give kind of like the... the one... the 1 1.5 times experience by having Craig in the lead. We'll see if that works out. See? Team Galactic Alternative Energy. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I respect it. But there's the confirmation. Been stealing Pokemon from trainers. Very bad. I'm not entirely sure what that outfit is. Kind of looks like the main character from the show Lazy Town if she had blue hair instead of pink. I will tell you though, it's a piece of cake to bake a pretty cake. Now I don't know if this is going to go well, but Craig has a huge attack stat. Okay, never mind. But we did flinch it, so that's interesting. We are pretty under leveled compared to this Silcoon. Oh, I guess we just flinch it to death. That's fine. Perhaps it's leveling. Doing pretty decent damage, I'd say. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> if we could flinch it all the way down, I don't know if we get lucky enough for that. I'm not entirely sure. Yep, yeah, okay. So it's four for four so far. Fingers crossed. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> okay. This could happen. Let's see if we'll get the clean sweep here. Looks like we will. That's amazing. Good job, Cranidos. Craig the Cranidos. Solid effort using your head, bud. Okay, so that was a lot more experience that way. That was pretty effective. Don't intend to keep doing that. It was pretty boring. But hey, why not? What is this? Yeah, that's what I would say if I got beaten up by an all-star kid as an adult being a little chump. The mysterious power of Pokemon. I wonder if people want to harness my mysterious energy. So of course they're going to try to be edgy. Smooth brain galactic members. And I know that you don't have to do the swap battle style of Pokemon in these games because of the experience all, but it is nice. I don't really know what Mold Breaker does, I'd have to look. Let's see, because I'm kind of curious. What does that do? Moves can be used on the target regardless of its abilities. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Not that it matters. But we are going to continue to kind of swip swap roo. Whatever I can do to benefit Craig and get him going as fast as possible. I don't intend to really do any off-screen grinding or anything like that. I'm more of an on-camera twerker if I have to be completely honest. But Miguel's doing pretty well. It's going to be quite a while before we can evolve Miguel, unfortunately. But having a Murkrow is pretty cool. I'm not sure if I know anybody in my personal life who would want one, but I can't imagine they wouldn't. Murkrows are great. We're already doing pretty darn well with Craig. It's just a matter of keeping at it. I've already gained eight levels in this episode alone, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we're just going to keep at it. These battles, unfortunately, are not super exciting. I apologize for that. But that's just kind of what you get in these early parts of these Pokemon games. I don't really know. In Red and Blue, you don't really interact with Team Rocket in a substantial way for quite a while. The Rocket hideout of that game where they 
are in the underground of Celadon. Like, that doesn't happen for a long time. But then you get their, the resurfacing of Team Rocket earlier in Gold and Silver when they're in the Slowpoke well. So, I don't know. I think it's interesting that in the first game they kind of held off on the introduction of terrorism. In this game, they're like, nope. You're going to see it right away. I mean, that's good writing, you know. When you are scripting out a film or a play, a video game perhaps, you want to introduce your conflict early. So, it gives people to something to, to get excited about, to latch on to. You want to do it early. That's a fact. And you want to dunk on these fools as early as you can. And that's what I love about this, is like, as you'll see in a little while, there seems to be like tiers of transparency with the knowledge that is being given to the different levels of command. The grunts are, you know, very tropey, very stereotypical. You know, they're being given no information. They're not entirely sure what they're doing, but, you know, they're given just enough information to sort of know what the cause is. They, as you could see, there's talk of how they, uh, they're trying to look up new forms of energy, but that's kind of what the aims of Team Galactic are, but not really. So I think it's interesting what gets withheld from them. And like, obviously the the main character, us, you, you gain and learn the information in a different way. Some of which is kind of, you know, you have like an omniscient narrator almost where some of the information you learn is not necessarily present and privy to the main character, but we learn it, human beings playing this game. I think it's really interesting. Okay, so he looks like he's in rough shape. They're really working their scientists to the bone here. Must be salaried. Okay. So there's a little boombox and some CDs. Those look like, uh... Those are, it looks like vinyl almost. Maybe that's a record player. It's like one of those custom things. It's like a record player slash cassette player slash CD player slash MP3 player slash toaster oven. One of those things. Those are neat. I need to get one. Toaster ovens are a great invention, by the way. So this is interesting. We can just kind of walk around freely up here. There's a, a man who looks like he's not really wearing pants, but he's like ankle warmers on and sandals. Or maybe he has pants and that's just his arm in the way. And then this magenta haired lass with her clefairy and her her buneary. Maybe we should see what's going on. First let's talk to clefairy. P. Pi. It's not March, unfortunately. Min. Great. Let's go ahead and talk to her and see what her stylish hairdo is doing for. We step in the way. Now I'm going to introduce herself. Rude. Okay. So this is our second fight with a galactic commander. This is Jupiter. Kind of wish she would have had orange hair because, you know, Jupiter is the big orange planet. But that's okay. That's okay. So we did get a new move for Craig. Rock polish. I believe this makes him faster. Yes. So, um, I mean, Zubat's not really too... Scary, I don't think. Oh, Supersonic, you, you little jerk. That's okay. Supersonic's a really frustrating move, but I love using Supersonic. I love using Confuse Ray because they're debuffs, but they're not, you're not limited. Like when you burn, poison, paralyze, freeze, you can add confusion on top of that, which I think is really fun because it can be just absolutely so frustrating. I mean, the ultimate combo is if you were able to confuse something Oh boy. Okay, maybe we'll swap out. I didn't know that the Zuba had Zorba. I don't really want to have Craig faint. She's got quite the outfit. Take a bow. That's weird. I'm not entirely sure how to, what to make of um, what she's wearing. It's interesting. I'll give her that. It's like a jumpsuit, but it's got like... It's like it was... 
Like they ran out of ink or something, or it's got a... Uh... I love how... Oh, goodness. I love how happy Steven was to just throw rocks at the Zubat. Just, just digging it. Yeah, it looks like they almost ran out of ink. Or she, like, ripped the pants. You don't want to rip your pants. All right, so Bard is catching up. Very good. And that's one of the nice things about the experience all. Okay, so here we go. Here is her ace. This is Skun Tank. This is... Whew, this one's a doozy. So, in the same way that Mars had Perugly, Jupiter has Skun Tank. Skun Tank is a version exclusive. I believe it is dark and poison type. So I don't know how well this is going to go, but it does no flamethrower. I did know that, and I was hoping that it wouldn't. So we'll see if Bart can hang in there for a moment. Get the paralysis going. Yes. So unfortunately, we don't really have anything that's super good against the typing that Skun Tank has. You're going to really want a ground type. Ground types are great. So we do have... Oh, I said Steven earlier. I meant Samuel. Samuel does have Mudslap, so that's the only ground type move we really have. And being a water type, it will be averse to the flamethrower. So we'll see if Samuel can rue the day here. We're gonna slap it with so much mud. Just slappy slap, slappity slap. And it will reduce the accuracy over time up to six opportunities. Not sure what Snarl does. Great. Does that reduce our accuracy? Special attack, great. Well, I don't think Mud Slap is, it is. Great, so, you know, just reduce the thing we're already using. That's awesome. Whatever we can do to drag this fight out as long as possible. So we do have a little bit of a plan. So hopefully Samuel can hang in there for one more of those. I'm trying to reduce the accuracy of Skunk Tank, which is obviously a skunk. I love the design of Skunk Tank, how it has like its tail kind of whipped up over its head almost kind of like additional hair. It kind of looks like a cat as well, which I think is interesting. All right, so Samuel now is poisoned. This skunk tank is kind of a turd. And we're going to go ahead and get Samuel out of there. You've done some good work. Let's go ahead and let's see who would be, who can whittle it down. We're gonna spread it out. Let's get Miguel in there. Why not? Spread the love. Should be good. And the paralysis comes through for us. Very nice. And I don't. I would like to use Brave Bird, but unfortunately, that seems kind of risky because I don't know how strong this Skun Tank is. And the moment it gets a hit, I don't want any of my Pokemon to faint. Oh, but it does have a berry. That's annoying. It just has. Oh, okay. So there we go. That's actually our first introduction to the Citrus Berry. It is the. Superior variant of the Orin Berry. It can heal you for 30 HP instead of the usual 10. So, pretty nice. Hopefully, Miguel can hang in there for one more turn. And we'll swap out. I'm just trying to make this a little more exciting. I'm not trying to power through here or anything. Add a little bit of tension here, a little suspense. We might entries pride ourselves on the amount of clenching of the bee hole we were able to provide for our constituents. So that Intimidate is actually really nice. Unfortunately, we don't have Sharon, who can do a double Intimidate, but that's okay. Let's see how much this does. Very good. Yes, so that was really smart. And we'll see... I'm gonna have Steven stand in for one more moment. We'll use our Orin Berry on Craig. Off screen. He's just gonna have a little snack while we're in the middle of this fight. This gun tank does have its accuracy lowered three times, which is very good. So that's nice. Very nice. And we'll go ahead and swap in Craig. Let's see if Craig can win the day for us. I actually have a, a plan. This is probably going to go really poorly, and it's probably going to get knocked out immediately, but that's okay. But in the event that it doesn't... Okay, so we'll see if this works. 
I don't ever have a use for these, but I'm going to do it now because I figure why not. Knowing my luck, I'm going to use this X attack and then get knocked out in the preceding move. Okay, so the things are going well so far. Let's see if we can just headbutt it to death. All right, it worked. But unfortunately, you have to be careful with this is that it does have the ability Aftermath, so it will do some damage to you. Now this would hopefully boost up Craig quite a bit. Yes, a thousand experience. Almost at HP again, but I caught myself. Samuel leveled up, everybody really coming along here. Feeling pretty heckin' good. Well done, everybody. Successful defeat of Jupiter in her goofy costume. It almost looks like the left side doesn't have, like it's not part of the pants. Like she's got tape on her leg or something like that. It's very strange. So they've investigated the Pokemon statue and uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because of how innocuous all of this is and very silly. They're mentioned the first allusion to their boss. We don't know who that is yet. But we've been warned, so. It appears this Clefairy and Buneri were from this gentleman here with his nice flippy floppies. You are welcome. So this is the cycle shop owner. He was the one that was threatened by Team Galactic. We were able to free him in this building from the clutches of Team Galactic Music. So we're gonna go give him a quick visit. See what the cycle shop's all about. If you remember before, there's nothing doing with the cycle shop. And those trees grew back pretty quick. Soil in Eterna City must be pretty fertile. Okay. So we'll pop into there in a moment. We're gonna go ahead and heal up first. That seems like a good idea, right? That was a pretty tough battle, but we pulled through. Go visit the bike shop. Maybe we'll get some freebies. The best things in life are free, sometimes. Okay, and it's just right next door. No, it is not. It's right below here. Here at DMIC Industries, don't forget to turn on your GPS. Some pretty cool looking hardware out there. And there's Clefairy. And the bike shop owner himself. So in return for freeing him from the clutches of evil, we netted ourselves a free bike. And here at DMIC Industries, if you couldn't tell already, our favorite color is red, matches our cap. Check out that rockin' helmet. Safety first, everybody. Also, look how low resolution that helmet is, too. The bike looks great, but that helmet, oof. Do you want a red bike? Uh, yes. Now, mind you, the bike color you choose is permanent. So, whatever you choose now, you can't change it. So, we've chosen red, the color of passion. Calls to mind images of the flame on Charmander's tail. When I mean, they could have said Chimchar. But, okay, whatever. So here's how you read the bike, read the bike, ride the bike, can't talk. Press the B button to shift gears, it says. In third gear, the bike cannot reach full speed, but it will be easier to handle. In fourth, you can ride at full speed and climb up slopes. Awesome. So here you go. You can ride your bike from your bag's key items pocket. Press the B button to speed up or gain control. I think that's what that said, I didn't really read it. So you need to go ahead and register your bike if you want to be able to ride it easily. So we'll just put on the left. You can press the left button to hop on and off. I think that's what that said. Is that really what that's doing? Okay, I don't know. It looked like, hold on a second. Is that what that said? It looks great, okay. So next time we'll do a little bit of a bike ride and we'll head south onto Cycling Road. So thanks for watching everybody. I've been D-Mike, this has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I'll see you next time. Bye.